What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of our R&B review. It's your boy Reg in the building. Got my homegirl Ash with me. Got my homeboy Try with me. That's good. What up? Yeah. Um. So this is another episode based on our little Motown tribute month we're doing, and this is um, requested by Ashley herself. It is um. Marvin Gaye and Tammy Terrell's United album. Hold up. Mm-hmm. Oh, God. There. If y'all can see it, that's the album right there. I should like that. Yeah. This was the first um collab album that they've done together. This was released in 1967 on Tamla, which was under Motown Records. Um... Singles albums known for are Ain't No Mountain High Enough, Your Precious Love, and um, If I Could Build My Whole World Around You, which had the B-side if if this world was mine, were mine. Um, Producers include Harvey Fuqua, Johnny Bristol, Hal Davis, and um, Barry Gordy Jr. And yeah, just Marvin and Tammy and shit like that, so... Yeah, man. Um, when it comes to Motown duets and stuff like that, or soul duets in general, Marvin and Tammy definitely have like a soft spot in a lot of people's hearts and stuff like that. I mean, and this was not really like the first duet partner Motown tried to pair um, Marvin with because you guys should know that he was also did an album with um, Mary Wells. He did some work with um. Kim Weston too. Um, years after this, he would uh, also do a collab album with Diana Ross in 1973 too. So he's keen to do it, but it's the duets with Tammy Terrell that was um well really solidified like his leg one of his his early success in Motown history and stuff like that. So we all know who Marvin Gaye is and stuff. So. I'll just give y'all some background history about who Tammy Terrell is. Um, Tammy Terrell is a singer born and raised in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Um, She was the oldest of two siblings and stuff like that. Um, Pretty much, her full name from when I looked up was Thomasina. Thomasina. Thomasina, thank you. And she later dropped it to Tammy after seeing the movie um, Tammy and the Bachelor. So, when she was growing up, she had, like, a tragic life growing up and stuff. When she was 11, she was, like, raped by three guys. And then, when she was growing up, too, she had on these migraine headaches, which would eventually be, like, brain tumors and stuff like that. And so, her family, her family, um, pretty much, you know, they just really thought nothing of it and things like that nature. You know, you know, because at that time... It wasn't really widely known. Like brain tumors were not really widely known at those times and stuff like that. So, 1960, she did this ballad called "If You See Bill" under the name Tammy Montgomery. And what really set her off was when she got introduced to James Brown, and pretty much he she signed with him to perform on tour and things of that nature. And so. Her first chart and single was a song called I Cried. It was a song called I Cried um, on his King label. It was him and his Try Me records and stuff like that. And so, y'all should know that, you know, if you guys know James Brown, you know he has like a volatile history with women. And pretty much he kind of abused Tammy Terrell. Pretty much and stuff like that. Um, during tour. And it got to the point where um, Jean Chadler had to call her parents just to get her out of the tour and stuff like that, you know what I'm saying? And so, while she was singing in nightclubs, she performed at the 20 Grand Club and she was discovered by Barry Gordy. And so Barry pretty much signed her to the Tamla Records and stuff like that on her 20th birthday. And so, she had like a few early songs like the song all I do is think about you, which y- y'all should know is the Stevie Wonder song. 
from the Hotter Than July album, but originally he wrote that for Tammy Terrell and stuff like that. So, but then it was 1967, whereas Marvin Gaye was pretty much getting his footing on Motown. He had a few hits at that time, like Pride and Joy, um, Hitchhike, How Sweet It Is To Be Loved By You, and so on and so on. And so they paired him up with Tammy Terrell and the rest is history right there. So the key ingredient to Marvin and Tammy's success, in my personal opinion, is Ashford and Simpson. Now I know you guys are thinking Ashford and Simpson, they, you guys might know them for that song Solid As A Rock, which I love that song to this day. But originally they started off as songwriters in Motown and they wrote a lot of stuff for like Marvin and Tammy and stuff like that and that's how the whole United album came about. Now you know with Motown you have like a few hit songs here and there and then you have like a few cover songs here so you know um, how this goes. Album has about 12 tracks so let's get this started. So we're gonna start off with the first song um, Ain't No Mountain High Enough which probably like the signature duet in probably like the best duet in Motown history in my personal opinion um just the beat once you hear them drums come in and stuff like that um I love the like the energy between those two and this song displayed is very unique to you and stuff like that um Marvin like Marvin just sounded it was at his happiest too when singing this track and yes the song has been covered a lot of times I know Diana Ross did a cover in 1970 off her debut album and stuff like that, but the original, in my opinion, would always be timeless. Um, what got me into this song was the movie Remember the Titans. Y'all should know that movie and stuff like that. So, yeah, that is, um, what's the song? Ain't No Mountain High Enough. That's, that, that's the song right there. That's exact. you know, um, I heard the Diana Ross um, cover. That was uh, great. Um, you know, you have uh, Marvin and Tammy singing, you know, if you need me, call me, no matter where you are, no matter how far. And, you know, I had a nice um, uh, beat, nice guitars, um, nice bass. Um, a real, I want to say it was like a, like a, like, upbeat type of track. And, and um, I mean, it's, it's a classic song. Like everybody knows that song. When you think Motown, you think of, of you know songs like that. And, uh, I like it. A great way to start the album. Yeah. Ain't no mountain high enough. I first heard this song, like what Red just mentioned, the first time from the movie Remember the Titans. Yeah, and. and I already knew that Diana Ross covered this song, and I know plenty of other people did um, their cover versions of this song, but this this song is such a classic. It'll stand, it's pretty much um, standing at the test of time, and it's just a, just a beautiful song, and I've seen the video, and it looked like that Marvin and Tammy were really happy together, because when you hear the song, it kind of made you believe that they were an actual couple. But, um, but yeah, Ain't No Mountain High Enough is definitely a memorable song by Marvin and Tammy's careers. And it's a still a fan favorite as well as mine. Yeah, um, and one more thing I forgot to mention. Originally, um, Dusty Springfield, the British soul singer, wanted this song too and stuff like that but Ashford and Simpson I don't know if it was either Ashford and Simpson or Barry Gordy that wanted it for to be a hit for them and stuff like that so that's something interesting and um Tammy Terrell was also nervous when recording this song too so that's something to like take notice of and stuff so that was Ain't No Mountain High Enough next track we have is you got what it takes. This track right here was originally from Marv Johnson, which was an also a Motown singer himself. 
one of the earlier Motown singers, and yeah, yeah, that's what I have to say. One of the earliest Motown singers. Um, this one was pretty dope. Um, I felt like Tammy definitely did a thing on this record right here and stuff like that. So I felt like it was a very solid track. Yeah, this was good. Um, nice beat. Um, nice horns on it, bass, and um, Tammy singing. You know, you don't drive a big car. You don't look like a movie star, and then you get Marvin's um uh, uh, take on it. He says um you don't live in a beautiful place and you don't have such a beautiful face, but you know your um you're good enough for me. Uh, that's like the message I got in the song. Like you know you don't have to be like you know perfect to be with me. And, and um you know all you need to all you need to do is just be yourself and and. I love it. I think it's a it's a great track. Um, one of my favorites on the album. Yeah, I agree on that. One. You got what it takes was definitely a good song. I mean, they both did a phenomenal job, but I feel that Tammy's vocals definitely shine throughout this track right here. Yeah, I get what the message is saying, what Charlie was saying, and pretty much they're speaking facts because let's face it, you really don't have to be perfect or prove to be perfect to be with somebody or show somebody that you're just right for them, just the way you are. Right. Um, I, I definitely love the message of this song too and stuff. Track number three, If I Could Build My Whole World Around You. Um, another dope song and stuff like that. And this was pretty good too because it really establishes like the style between these two because and a lot of like soul duets especially between like a male and a female you have like the male doing like a verse and the female doing a verse and then next next thing you know it is just like in that last verse they're calling back and forth but with Marvin and Tammy they had like this little back and forth thing about how they will build the world around one another which was very the style was like very unique at that time when it comes to like a lot of soul duets. So I definitely love this song. I feel like it's a very unique song and stuff like that. And that beat is so nice on that track too. Yeah, this was this was good. Um, you know, uh what Marvin's saying, uh, pretty flowers would grow where uh, wherever you walk, honey. I'd have the whole world um wrapped up in your in your dog and that would be all right and you know it was a, it was a good track on um, nice horns again nice beat nice bass line <coughs> um definitely a solid track I if i could build my, my whole world around you it's it's to me it's like a sentimental track pretty much it's like like i i, I want to like have you in my space then I would and it's like I don't know, this is one of those those um songs that just I guess tugs at your heartstrings to be like, yeah, you could hear like Marvin pouring his heart out on this track and then just the dynamic between him and Tammy on it, it's just the whole back and forth thing. It's it's just so um their dynamic was just so in sync that that it was like I feel like the more they work together, I feel like the more closer they got. That's what I got, got out of it. Right. I definitely love the dynamic within the song right here. Um, I mean, like I, like I said before, I feel like Motown do not use T I feel like they use Tammy right, but I also feel like they didn't use Tammy right, in my opinion, because in, 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 even, even I think Ashford and Sunset it themselves and stuff like that, because... When it comes to like a lot of female artists in Motown, if your name is not like Diana Ross or even to an extent Martha Weaves and stuff like that, you might you might get a little put in a waste basket and stuff like that. That's what I think, but that's another story yeah. for a different day. Alright, um next track we have is a track called Something Something Stupid or something. <laughs> yeah, something stupid. All right. 
Yeah, this was a, another track that was a cover of the um cover from Frank and Nancy Sinatra. With Nancy Sinatra being um a Frank Sinatra's um daughter. This song was okay. It wasn't really um This song was okay. It wasn't really too big on this track right here and stuff like that. But like I said, I did like that chemistry that was displayed all all throughout this track. Yeah, this was nice. Um, a lot of track, nice beat, nice horns. Um, ten, uh, Marvin and Tammy singing. I can see it in your eyes that you despise the singing lies you heard the night before. And um, you know I. I didn't know. I didn't know um, Frank and Nancy. Um, I didn't even know if, uh, uh, Frank Sinatra's daughter was singing. But, um, nice cover tune. I think. I think Tammy and Marvin definitely pulled it off. Definitely um, one of my favorites on this album. Yeah, yeah. I had no idea this song was a cover of Frank and Nancy Sinatra's song. I mean, I knew Frankie Jr. was a singer, like his dad, but I had no idea his daughter was either. So stupid. It's to me. To me, their rendition of it. It was kind of cute. I, I'll admit that it's just. Um, I don't know. To me, it seemed like one of those um, playful songs between Marvin and Tammy. Yeah, their rendition of it wasn't bad at all. Yeah, I definitely see what you're saying and stuff like that. I feel like. I feel like if I hear it like the Frankie and Nancy Sinatra version, I'll definitely probably get a good picture of it and stuff. So, yeah. Now, your precious love. This is like my favorite, favorite, favorite track off this album. Um, pretty, pretty nice little beat with that bass line and a little like guitar and stuff like that. Um. The vocals on this is amazing and stuff like that. It, it, it was a very sexy track for the time. Very sexy track that I feel like not a lot of people give the credit for and stuff like that. Um, I love the lyric when they say, give me one second. And darling, oh, they keep saying, oh, wait, God damn it. I pulled out, uh, found it, okay. Every day there's something new, honey, to keep me loving you. And with every passing minute, our baby so much joy wrapped up in it and stuff like that. I always love that opening lyric and stuff like that. I feel like it was a pretty dope song. I know that um D'Angelo and Erica Badu, they did their version of this track for the movie um High School High and stuff like that. So if y'all interested, check that version out. So very dope track. Yeah, I love um that that Tall riff, dee, 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 dee. Mm -hmm. love that. Um, this was also sampled by um Fantasia for um collard greens and cornbread. Yeah, yes. he sampled that. Um, and some other artists sampled it as well. Um, yeah, about that guitar riff, I love that. The, the finger snaps on the track, and um, uh, my mother and Tammy singing, Heaven must have sent you from above, Heaven must have sent you precious love. Definitely a, a great track and um, one of the standouts on this album. I agree. I agree. Yeah, Your Precious Love, I, I know that a lot of people heard this song and I know it's that guitar riff was sampled from Fantasia's song, like Try mentioned. And I heard that, that riff getting used on um, NDRE's song, Steady Love, as well. Yeah, yeah. It's just another one of those um, timeless Motown songs that I know their fans will never, never get tired of at all. And it's just, it's just a beautiful melodic song by 
by two incredible human beings that um I don't know what it is. It's just like the more you just hear this album, it's kind of like their chemistry towards one another was like very, very strong. And it's definitely sh it's shown on this track here. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with you on that, man. Like chemistry wise, chemistry wise, I will even put this all but ain't no mountain high enough some days and stuff like that. But it is what it is with that one. And that was um your precious love track number six hold me oh my darling um this was like another cool track and stuff like that um nothing really too much to say about this track um i just felt like it was good the way it is this is a good track you know nice beat um marvin singers won't, won't uh won't you please be my god in life and then tammy said i'm singing i get a strange sensation Every time I hear your name, you know, um, yeah, it was it was cool. You know, I liked it. Nice ones in front of it as well. Yeah, I'll admit this song wasn't it wasn't bad, but um, to me, it just um, it was just one of those songs that didn't really stand out to me. That's what I got out of um, that's what I got out of "Hold Me on My Darling." I'll admit it was decent too. Same. Um, track number seven, Two Can Have a Party. Love this song based on just the energy that they have alone. Um, this was um produced by Johnny Bristol and Fuqua and Thomas Kep. And I felt like um the chorus is what really made this track alone and stuff like that. Like you can have a, like uh it's just just that typical sixties Motown a beat feel and stuff like that which I love. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this was dope. Um I like the beat and the bass. Um uh uh Marvin saying um pretty music, uh crazy um I don't know, pretty, pretty music a cozy chill, um lights down low and I'm holding it near. And um you know, I, I think it was like a nice uh, love song, you know, between Marvin and Tammy and, and uh, you know, uh, definitely a, a, a great track. Yeah, Two Can Have a Party is, the, is definitely a favorite of mine off this album as well. It's just, I don't know, just I guess that beat is just so infectious and and so up-tempo that it just it just has that, that signature 60s sound that Motown had during that time. Right. Yeah. Next track, Little Old Boy, Little Old Girl. Um, This was a cover of the song by this group called Low and Joe. Um, I didn't really care too much for this track. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, Low and Joe. <laughs> um, yeah, but it, I like the pianos. You know, they had a beat to it and the horns and, and moments singing, I'm I'm little old boy looking for a little old girl and I hope I met someone that you're looking for. And, you know, Tam um, Tammy when she sings, she says like, you know, I'm a little old girl looking for a little old boy. And I think it was like a like one of those like boy meets uh, girl type of song. Right. Little old boy, little old girl. Um even though it was, vocally it was good, but overall I just really didn't care too much for this song. It just it it just did not appeal to me. I feel y'all on that. I definitely feel y'all. Yeah. Um. Next track, if this world were mine. Um. Yeah, very very dope track. Yeah, Marvin actually wrote this track himself and stuff like that. I've always thought. Ashford and Simpson wrote this one, but yeah, it turns out Marvin wrote it. Um, mm -hmm. Legendary song right here, which as much as I love this version, I'm going to be that one who said that I always prefer the Luther Vandross and Cheryl Lynn version of this track. Yes. I felt like they took it to another level in my personal opinion. Even Marvin 
from what I looked up, Luther even to and Marvin even Carl Luther said he loved that track, what they did with it and stuff like that. So yeah, I definitely feel you on that, you know. Yeah, this was a good song, one of my favorites on here. Um real melodic, I like the beat. Um uh, uh Tammy singing on like this world with mine and make you a king with the wealth untold you could have anything. And um, you know, just a beautiful um a song, song done sung by Marvin and Tammy. The song was also um sampled by Saigon for um his one shots mixtape in um I think it was two thousand and four for a song called um uh If My Mommy and he was like you know um like he dedicated the song to his mother and, and like they used like the sample, you know, this well that's that part he used for like the sample of the song. So um definitely a, a beautiful song. Yeah, if this world was mine, I'll admit it's um, Marvin and Tammy did did a good job with this this song here, but it was the Luther Vandross and Cheryl Lynn version of it that really blew it up the way the way they did, and. I, I really had no idea Marvin wrote this song either. That that was news to me. But um, even though this will always be the original, it's just something about that the Luther Vandross and Cheryl Lynn rendition of the song that just sounded you know, st stood out to me more more than this one. Yeah, I, I definitely understand. But overall, the song is just another timeless track to me. I agree, most definitely. Then we got is um Sad Wedding, which another song I didn't really care too much for to be honest <laughs> with y'all. Yeah, I like I said, like I said, it just didn't really do anything for me. So that's all I have to say. Sad Wedding, I thought it was cool. Um, a nice track and a nice beat and horns. Um, uh, Tammy Marvin singing "You Fell in Love." First day we met, then later after, and later on we will uh, wed. And you know, it's like a, um, you know, like a wedding song. And when when the track starts off, we hear like that wedding, that classic wedding theme playing. You know, um, I thought it was cool. Yeah, sad, sad wedding. I had mixed feelings about it as I was listening to this earlier. I mean, I I understand like the gist of it, like especially at the beginning of it with the wedding theme of it, but I just really didn't understand the whole point of it, to be real. Yeah. Yeah. I um and after said wedding, give a little love. Which this I felt like this was another underrated track because I I've heard this even before yeah. I heard the album and stuff like that. Um, I love the chorus, love the vocals between both Marvin and Tammy and like that nice guitar, ish kind of beat. So I, I like this track. Yeah, this was dope. Um, nice background vocals, you know, um, a lot of track. I like the pianos, the horns, the beat. Um, Marvin singing. I know I. I know I've uh, strayed far, far away from your arms, just like a fool. And um, yeah, definitely one of my favorites on the, on, the, on this album. Um, real solid track between Marvin and Tim. Yeah, um, <clears throat> Give a Little Love is, um, is another favorite track of mine from this album. It's just everything just, just from the harmony to the chorus and the lyrics and vocally, it was just amazing. And I agree 100% with Reg. This is definitely a very underrated song. Yeah, definitely underrated, man, definitely. Um, and but the last track is a track called, God damn it, I hate this phone. <laughs> oh, how I, how I missed you. Yeah, oh, thank you, Oh, How I Miss You which it was an all right track and stuff like that i felt like it could have been a little bit better in my opinion um it was cool nice beat horns 
um, Marvin singing, um, oh, my, oh, Tammy singing in my life just begun. My sky did it, um, have the sun. That was, I was actually Marvin singing, um, but it was a nice song and, and a great way to, to end the album off. And, um, you know, Tammy, she sang, um, her parts um, beautifully as well. Oh, how I miss you. Um, I'll admit it was a good way for dinner for the album to end, but honestly, it 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 was another one of those songs that really didn't grab my attention like that. It was decent. Shoot, I, I feel you on that. All right, um, and that's all of the time we have for this album. Overall. You know what? I actually really did like this album, despite a few flaws. But, you know, with 60s Motown, they record like one single. They like to rush release it and stuff like that. So I can't really, it would, can't really blame Marvin and Tammy in general and stuff like that. But for what the material that they got, I felt like it was very dope, very soulful, very poppy and stuff like that. Um, I... I really can't say if this is my favorite Marvin and Timmy album because they dropped like two other ones even though there's a lot of controversy with the last one, the, the one that's called Easy and stuff like that. But I feel like this is a very strong album regarding Motown and stuff like that. And yeah, I'll definitely give this a four out of five. Was there any like turmoil with this album? Like when they were recording it, was there like any things going on with um, like Tammy and Marvin, or like what he dating at this time? They were always like brother and sister relationship because at that time Marvin was married to Anna Gordy, which was Barry Gordy's sister, and Tammy yeah. was seeing David Ruffin and stuff like that. So, oh yeah. Now the turmoil happened with Tam with those respective relationships, but yeah, that's all I gotta say about right. that. So not nothing really bad happened during this album. No. Nope. Oh, matter of fact. I, I liked it. I thought it was it was a different. I thought it was a good album. You know, um, you get that that classic Motown sound. You know, and, and um, you can tell like they were in sync with each other on like a lot of tracks. You know, um, you got what it takes and um, the precious love, something stupid, um, this world of mine. It was a little love. I, I love all of those songs. I think it's like that's classic song music and. Um, it's, it's just a different, it was just a different um, um, time for you know, black music as a whole. And I think it's, it's, it's a great album. I would give it like a solid 4.5. I feel you, I definitely feel you on that. Yeah, this is my first time listening to a Marvin and Tammy album ever. And I'll admit, United it had a lot of a lot of good songs from Ain't No Mountain High Enough, and Precious Love, Give a Little Love, um, Something Stupid, tracks like that. It was definitely an incredible album for both of them, and especially during that during the during the '60s, of course. And vocally, they they shined equally throughout this whole album. I'll give this four out of five. Definitely. All right, and so that concludes um, the Marvin and Tammy United review. And like like we should have, yeah, like we on plan tonight, we're gonna to talk about the recently released You're the Man album for Marvin and stuff like that. So definitely feel like we knocked this one out the park. You guys got anything to say before I close out this review? Love, I love the um, like what you're doing with the Motown reviews. I definitely think like um, it's like my first time listening to a Marvin and Tammy album after you know hearing all my life about them. So I definitely think like this is it's great to like revisit the '60s music and you see the difference with you know with that era and with like you know. The other eras, you know, following the '60s, I, I definitely feel like um, it's a, it's like a you know, like going to school almost, <laughs> and and studying you know these these legendary uh, Motown artists. So, salute to you for that. Yeah, appreciate appreciate. Yeah, I um, 
I, I was somewhat familiar with Marvin and Tammy's work, especially like um, I know I watched Tammy Terrell's episode of Unsung a few times. And of course, I already knew some stuff about Marvin from watching certain documentaries on the Reels channel or whatever. But yeah, this was definitely a good idea. Yeah, I appreciate that definitely. And like I said, um, I'm going to let y'all know about some albums I got really planned up by next week, hopefully by tomorrow and stuff like that. So. I'm gonna go finish watching my grandma making some phone calls and stuff, so I will see y'all tonight. Peace. Hope everyone has a good afternoon, good day.